Alcatraz. Twelve acres of solid rock, the nation's toughest federal penitentiary. It's been described in four words, maximum security, minimum privileges. It's a mile and a half off San Francisco, just 13 minutes by boat. The island houses some 300 federal prisoners, described as the worst type. For the first time, television cameras have been permitted inside Alcatraz. You are now in the big cell block, double bolted, time locked bars, and pink walls. Alcatraz has one guard for every three inmates. The prisoners spend some 14 hours a day in cells five feet wide, nine feet deep. More than a dozen men have tried to escape from the rock. None have made it. Alcatraz, with its centuries old history from Native Americans to Fort Alcatraz to a military barracks. Most infamously known, however, as one of the toughest federal penitentiaries in the United States. With years of suffering, death and desperation, it is no wonder that this place is said to be one of the most haunted areas in America. Often described as a portal to another dimension, Alcatraz is filled with energy of those who came to the rock and seemingly never left. From its first visitors, tales and legends of the island have circulated for several centuries. In the beginning, the Native Americans believed the island to be inhabited by evil spirits. As severe punishment for violations of tribal law, Indians were sometimes isolated on the island or even banished for life to live among the evil spirits. Today, these spirits that continue to lurk in the shadows of the often fog-enshrouded island have been heard, seen, and felt by both the staff and many visitors to Alcatraz. The sounds of men's voices, screams, whistles, clanging metal doors, and the terrifying screams are said to be heard within these historic walls, especially near the dungeon. So why is Alcatraz haunted? Let's start at the beginning. The island has always had a dark history, even before the first prisoners arrived. Years before being inhabited, Native Americans from the Bay Area were aware of Alcatraz Island. They referred to it as the Evil Island and believed it was haunted by evil spirits. It wasn't until much later in the 1800s that the island received its first form of inhabitants, with construction work assembling a military fort and prison along with a lighthouse. As the American Civil War broke out in 1861, Alcatraz's island security was bulked up with cannons and more firepower. It became a firearm storage base and went on to house many prisoners of war. It wasn't until 1933 that the island became a federal prison and by 1934 the first batch of prisoners arrived. Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary was intended to house the worst of the worst. Focus was put into security as a result, rehabilitating these individuals thought to be hopeless. The most violent and dangerous individuals were sent to Alcatraz, since they could not fit safely into standard prison environment. Word soon spread that Alcatraz was not a desirable place to serve time. As history shows the poor treatment and living conditions prisoners were subjected to, torture, starvation, punishment were all part of day-to-day -day life inside of Alcatraz. Mixing that with the violence, murder and suicides, it's no wonder there were so many escape attempts. During the 29 years that Alcatraz functioned as a federal penitentiary, there's a documented 14 escape attempts made by 36 men. Of these, 23 were caught, 6 shot dead by guards, and two were confirmed to have drowned, with a further five presumed to have drowned, yet still missing. One of these failed escape attempts escalated into a riot now known as the Battle of Alcatraz. During this two-day takeover, many were injured and sadly, two guards were murdered. It's now easy to see why the prison has such a dark reputation. There are many reports of ghost sightings in Alcatraz, from former inmates and guards to recent explorers. One of the most disturbing ghost stories originates in the 1940s, 
One night, an Aruli prisoner was sent to D-Block. Cell Block D in Alcatraz was known as the Hole, and held the solitary confinement cells, reserved for the most poorly behaved prisoners. It was an area both prisoners and guards alike were hesitant to visit. These five cells were extremely cold, the prisoners were forced to strip naked, and their mattresses were removed each morning, forcing them to either stand all day, or sit on the cold floor. One of these cells was known as Zorintal, and unlike the other solitary cells, prisoners were left completely in the dark, with only a hole in the floor in which to relieve themselves. Once the inmate had been locked in solitary, his behaviour became concerned and erratic. Guards reported the prisoner believed there was an evil creature within his cell, sporting glowing red eyes and viciously attacking him. The guards were quick to dismiss this claim, however, putting it down to his lack of sanity from being confined to such a dark room. For many hours, this prisoner continued to scream within the cell, until suddenly falling silent. The next morning, this man was found dead. He had strange markings around his neck that would signify he'd been strangled. Mystery surrounds this case, as it was found that the man's wounds could not have been self-inflicted. Eerily, days later, when the guards lined up the convicts for a daily count, one too many convicts were in the lineup. There, at the end of the row, appeared the recently strangled convict. As everyone, guards and prisoners alike, looked on in stunned silence, the ghostly figure vanished. Cell Block C is another highly active paranormal area. Many believe that the utility passageway where convicts Bernard Coy, Joseph Kretzer and Marvin Hubbard were killed during their escape attempt in the Battle of Alcatraz is haunted. Loud clanging noises are often heard but stop when the door is opened, only to then once again resume when the door is closed. Others have reported seeing the apparitions of men wearing fatigues and hearing disembodied voices at the riot site that left the three prisoners dead. The laundry room in cell block C is also said to hold an unseen presence. When a CBS news team brought in celebrity psychic Sylvia Brown, along with ex-convict Leon Thompson, Sylvia immediately encountered the unseen presence and strong impressions of violence in the laundry room. As she described a tall man with a bald head and small beady eyes, Leon Thompson, the ex-convict, moved forward stating, I remember Butcher. He was a hitman with Murder Incorporated before they caught him. His name was Abby Maldowitz, but we called him Butcher. Another prisoner killed him here in the laundry room. Prison records confirm that Maldowitz was indeed killed by another inmate in the laundry area of Cell Block C. There was only one place worse than solitary, and it's another major paranormal hotspot. Underneath A Block is an area known as the Dungeon. These catacomb-like basement areas were left over from the days when Alcatraz was a military fort and were used as punishment areas for those that deserved worse than the whole. Prisoners were stripped naked, chained to the wall in a standing position and given very little food. While the screams of the inmates who were unfortunate enough to spend time there couldn't be heard in the rest of the prison, they can still be heard today. A worker claimed to have heard a horrible scream coming from the dungeon, but when he investigated, there was no one there. So is Alcatraz haunted? It's not uncommon for paranoia and fear to exist within the confines of prison, especially one as horrific as Alcatraz. Prisoners' minds can often snap when put under such stress, as is the case with inmate Rue Percival who was hospitalised after purposely cutting off all the fingers on one hand with a hatchet while working in one of Alcatraz's workshops. Laughing, he asked the guard to take care of the fingers on the other hand. Others, such as Ed Woodker, who used a pencil sharpener blade to slice through his jugular, successfully killing himself. Joe Bowers attempted something similar, using his eyeglass lenses, and when he failed, climbed the outer fence knowing he'd be shot. He then fell 75 feet to certain death. And yet, the evidence suggests this is one legend that could well be true, with credible accounts from witnesses like staunch skeptic James Johnson, first warden at Alcatraz. As the longest serving warden, he'd seen many things take place in his prison, but still refused to believe in ghosts. 
he could never account for what happened when he was giving a group of people a tour. As they passed by the dungeon, Johnson heard the sounds of a woman crying that seemed to be coming from the wall. Just as the sobbing stopped, an icy wind blew through the room and startled everyone. Even today, many tour guides and rangers refuse to speak on the lingering spirits, for such is their fear strong enough to avoid the topic. Listening carefully, you'll hear whispers, unexplained footsteps, screams echoing from the dungeon are all sure to be part of your stay at the old prison. So if you're brave enough to visit Alcatraz, be sure to keep your visit brief, or you may just find yourself locked in with the restless apparitions of former inmates.